Hey gang, welcome back for another video here on Joe Chem. Okay gang, I know if you've watched the intro to amino acids video as well as the one about isoelectric pH and just pH in general, I know those have been long. I'm gonna try and keep the video shorter, but I just really wanted to make sure that heading into this, we had a strong foundation with this material because it's really annoying if you miss points about this stuff and it's not even like really doing hardcore organic chemistry, it's just, you know, knowing the basics. But anyways, we've talked about them enough but now let's figure out how to make them. So this video is gonna be dedicated to making amino acids, but with some help from an old friend. So we're going to kind of leverage some of the knowledge we know about the Gabriel synthesis to make amino acids. So we're gonna do two examples, we're keeping it short, so let's just get on with it. Okay, so if we look at this, what's going on right here, we are gonna take this structure, which you can synthesize you know, with like through the Gabriel synthesis, uh, I'll keep the I'll put the link for that reaction video in the description, but uh, this is thalamid. It's very accessible, very common. So from thalamid, we're going to I mean we're going to introduce some things over the arrow, but we are going I'm going to show you how you can use thalamid and leverage it to make what over here is alanine, right? And it's going to happen in a racemic mixture, so we're going to make both you know S and R alanine in equal amounts from this, okay? But let's figure out how we do this. So the very first thing you're gonna to need to do, and you can pretty much start off with this, it's readily available, but you're not gonna be using alanine per se, you're actually gonna be using, you know, an alanine salt, so, or sorry, not alanine, <laughs> thalamine salt. So you're, probably, you're gonna be using something like potassium thalamine, but even if you just had thalamine, you could deprotonate it with a base, right? So you're gonna have thalamid, and the very first thing that you're going to do is you are going to, um, you will have, uh, you'll have to toss this in, but you're gonna need a diester. And specifically, you know, this is a very common one. We're gonna be using a diester that like this, and it's gonna have a good leaving group on it. So for, uh, we haven't introduced anything with alanine yet, but it's very common that you're gonna throw in a diester and you need a carbon right in between right here. You'll see why we need that in a second. So what's gonna happen is this nitrogen, very negative, is gonna see the carbon in between, you know, nestled in between the diet, like the esters. So we're just going to do some SN2. We have a good leaving group. We're going to attack, good leaving group leaves. So once we produce this structure, we're kind of cooking and you'll see why. Okay, so we have this, and all we've done is really attach the nitrogen to this nonsense going on. Unfortunately, things are gonna get a little bit big. Okay, so basically we've taken our three carbon diester species, and we now have it attached to the what was just the thalum and salt, right? Salt just because it has a plus and minus thing going on. Okay, so what do we do from here? Well. We need to, at this point, this is gonna be the part of our reaction where we stick on the R group, okay? So because we, we just need a methyl group, right? That is our R group in this situation for alanine. So we can't do it right now, but we actually need, what we're going to do is this carbon, we don't know it yet, but this is gonna be C2. So this is C2. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that we can, we're gonna do, we're gonna take C2, we're gonna make it a nucleophile, we're going to attack something that's going to stick on our R group and then we're going to unwind everything. So what we need to do here is we need something to deprotonate this position. So use the base from your ester so you don't end up doing transesterification. So we would just toss in ETONA, a mixture of ethoxide and ethanol, right? Basically this is just going to say, okay, we have ethoxide available, that is going to deprotonate this position. We're going to make it nucleophilic. It's a lot of writing, I know, it's kind of annoying. I'm gonna give myself some space by kind of drawing this funky because what we do next then is we're going to toss in something that we can attack. And it's basically, this is, you can think of R plus a leaving group. So R is gonna be your side chain. So really we just need a 
CH3 bonded to a good leaving group. So let's just throw in some methyl bromide. Okay, so what we can do at this point is that this carbon is going to attack and we're going to kick this off. So at this point, we are attaching what is going to be the side chain in the amino acid we're making. I'm hoping I don't run out of space. Okay, so we got, we got one ester, we got a second ester, and then this is our CH3 that we just attached, okay? So now we need to do this artistic unwinding. We need to basically get rid of a bunch of stuff and be, and be left with an amino acid. So how do we do that? We're gonna be doing a few things and luckily since we've done the work beforehand, we don't have to you know, mechanistically show this. So, and also I'm gonna, the detail we're doing after this, I'm walking you through the whole process. We can kind of list all these steps in a one reaction era, mega, do everything all at once type thing. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to turn these esters into carboxylic acids. So, in fact, this is one giant step where you have H, you have acid, water, and heat. But I'm gonna show you what happens just in this one step alone, okay? So the very first thing is that you, you do ester hydrolysis and you have two carboxylic acids left there. So let me draw that. Like I said, this all happens at once, but I'm giving you the little behind, I'm gonna give myself more space, a little behind the scenes action. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw COOH, COOH, CH3. This is the carbon, there's the nitrogen. And drawing this in reverse is a little bit tough. Okay, there we go. Okay, cool. So just ester hydrolysis, right? We're gonna just basically primate these up. Water attacks, we do the tetrahedral intermediate, yada, yada, yada. I'll make sure to like that video for ester hydrolysis just in case you need a refresher. And then what's gonna happen as well is the heat gonna kick in and we do one decarboxylation. Actually, this is more of like a melodic ester synthesis type thing. I'll link that video instead. Uh, so we're gonna kind of, again, like I said, it's all in one step. So this is kind of a minus CO2 step. So we're just gonna lose one of them. Everything's chilling with the actual original thalamid part. But like we said, we just have this and the methyl group, okay? And then what's gonna happen at the same time, and here's kind of the giant like leap of faith, if you will, but we are going to undo this amide type thing that we have going on. It's like a reverse Gabriel synthesis. We're basically going to cut ties right here and here, because if you see this, we have R group, carboxylic acid, and amino group. So if we just end up with this, What is, what is a great starting material for a Gabriel synthesis. Then we end up with our lovely, lovely, and you can just assume that like we're just drawing this as a Zwitter ion, right? There's our amino group. There's our C, you know, our carboxylic acid. It's now a carboxylate. And now you see it's a methyl group, and I'm drawing it with no stereochemistry, but you can see that in this whole process, especially when we attack here, there's no way we can predict the stereochemistry. So this happens in equal amounts. You get a racemic mixture, but to just do one more recap, right? You start off with something that's you can basically unwind in a Gabriel synthesis fashion, right? Thalamid, very available choice. It's a very common choice to do this amino acid synthesis, right? You have to make sure it's in a salt form. You have to make sure your nitrogen is negative, right? So then you throw in a diester, right? carbon wedged in between with an ester on one side and another ester on the other side, right? This is this, uh, this uh, ethanoate, super popular to pick, right? It has to have a good leaving group, so you do SN2. Then you need to make a nucleophile out of what is going to be your C2 position at the end in your amino acid. Do that with the base that is a part of your ester, right? Just deprotonate. Then you throw in your basically your R group attached to a good leaving group, and you just do simple SN2. Then we do the, the magic unwinding act, right? We have to, we basically, this is one giant step through the power of acid, water, and heat, all in one. We do all this at once, basically. We're going to unwind our esters, 
just like in the melodic ester synthesis at the end, then we lose uh, CO2 because of the heat, right? We do a decarboxylation, and then we unwind the diamond part, leaving this, okay? So what I'm gonna show you, we're gonna do one more example. I'm gonna show you how to do this with a much more kind of minimal amide. It's a smaller amide is what I mean by that. But uh, I hope you followed this, and if any part seemed unsure for you, like I said, I'm gonna link, I'll link the melonic ester synthesis video, I'll link the Gabriel synthesis video, and I'll even link the decarboxylation video. So let me clean this up, we'll do one quick example and call it quits. Okay gang, let's do one more problem and call it quits for this video. Okay, so if we take a, a gander at the board, we ha think we have something, or I think we have something that looks uh, a little simpler than what we were just looking at, a little bit more minimalistic. And, you know, I wanted to take you through the whole start to end journey so that when we do something like this, it's super simple, okay? So I hope you see something, when we look at this right here, we're, this problem basically says, Given this, right, given this amide, you know, diester species, which we did see in the previous example when we made alanine, how do we make serine, right? And of course, you know, it's no surprise that we see that it's a racemic product mixture and we have equal parts R and S, okay? So real quick, right, we have this right here. The analog when, as to what we were just looking at beforehand would be we have the thalamid, and this would be when before we attach our R group, and we have this, right? So you can just see what I meant by a more minimalistic amid is that we don't have this giant uh, <laughs> thalamid eyesore, right? We have something much smaller, which is nice, right? So in this problem, I, I, the, the checklist of things we need to do, it's this position, right, that we know ends up being C2. So the dotted carbons are the same carbon, right? So the things we need to do, we need to make C2 oh, nucleophilic. Then we need to do SN2 and attach our group to C2. And then three is unwind it all, leaving the amino acid. I'm gonna abbreviate that as AA, okay? Right, so that's what we need to do. So what I wanna do is we're really just gonna list stuff down and I can, I'm gonna visually, you know, draw it out, but that's really, this question is just a fill in the reagent type of question, okay? So make C2 nucleophilic, right? We need to deprotonate this position. There's a very acidic hydrogen, right? Because this position is, you know, there's resonance up top, there's resonance on bottom. This H is very acidic. So, right, remember, at that point to deprotonate this position, we use the ether part of our ester. So we need to toss in, uh, we can do NF oxide, right? And our, our counter ion can be sodium, but of course, right, it's just going to be a mixture of ethanol and ethoxide, right? Okay, so that, step number one, would produce this for us. Up. And our negative charge is going to be right there on what is going to be C2, okay? Then, step two, is going to be do SN2 and attach the R group to what is going to be our C2 carbon, okay? So take a look, what is, so serine, what is the R group for serine? So I'm gonna kind of draw that as if this would be the amino acid right here. So we have a CH2, right? Just a CH2 and then an OH, CH2OH. So this was a little weird when I saw it for the first time, but if you think about it, it's almost like the aftermath of attacking what a Grignard, right? We can't just straight up, you know, do something like this because this thing is not only just super nucleophilic, it's super basic. So if we try to just do an attack like this, we're gonna actually just rip 
this proton off instead. We're just gonna do an acid-base reaction. So we can't do just a normal SN2, but we have no problem attacking something like formaldehyde because once we do that, we kick these up, we end up with this, right? And then this, this being attached to something, here's our, here's our CH2, and then we can just protonate that to be an OH, okay? So if we look at step two, all we're gonna toss in is formaldehyde because that's the carbon that ends up right here. And obviously the carbonyl oxygen will get protonated up to be OH. So if we look at step two, I'm gonna kind of like transition this down. We get something like this. Of course, things get giant. Okay, yeah, so there's the carbon we just added and then there's the oxygen. Okay, so then step three is gonna do many things. Step three is just gonna be H plus, water, and heat. Not only is that going to take care of, let me draw this a little bit better, it's kind of ugly. There we go. Not only is that gonna take care of protoning this up to be the OH that we need, but remember, that's going to initially turn this into a carboxylic acid, this into a carboxylic acid, then it's going to sub subtract one of them to be CO2, right? And then we're going to ditch this part, right? We're gonna do amide hydrolysis. So it's gonna unwind all of that to give us, and I won't draw stereochemistry, our wonderful serine, right? And if I wanted to, you know, then I could just point up there to say, it's gonna be a racemic mixture with a wedge and dash equal, you know, 50-50 split, okay? So the thing is, is that you can get, you can work with smaller amides. You don't need the giant thalamid, but you, if you just can creatively figure out how to, you know, add your R group in a really uh, a good way that doesn't, you know, have side reactions, side reactions meaning like, you know, you don't have, you know, uh, an acid-base reaction happen or something like that. If you can be clever, then the Gabriel synthesis type of pathway for your amino acid synthesis is a really good one. Okay, gang, don't want this video to run longer than it has to. So thank you for watching. Hopefully, thank you for liking and subscribing. And I'll see you all in the next video.